Hey, hey, this is Gster, aka the boss, that dude who does it. Um, I got an in-house stream for you. Uh, Co-casting is Riker. Riker says that I sound like a guy who's being auto-tuned right now. So, if it sounds like T Pain is singing to you instead of Gster is talking to you, then I want my money uh, because I haven't signed any record deals, and that's some bullshit. Uh, say hi to the crowd, please, Riker. Hello, yeah, I tell him Gister he should sing because he's having one of those synthesized <laughs> singers, but he's not going to show on for us today. No, 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 I'm not. But I will tell you what the compositions are right now. We got Red Team is Seventh Fleet, Blue Team is Nephilim. Seventh Fleet came out, Carriers and Levies on the outside, Duality and Prometheum, as you might expect, Double Guards, Kraken and Hatred. Bunny in the Destro and Keto rocking the Arbiter. On the other side, uh, Nephilim is Caboose. Dirty. Oh, we well, got pause. Yeah, Caboose is. Uh, all right. Well, we got to pause right now. That's good. We can catch up right now. Uh, double Battle Cruiser on the Nephilim side. Uh, Guardian and Overlord in the middle, along with them. And then, did you see what was on the outside? Uh, I did not. Okay, well, we'll we'll catch you guys up on what's on the outside, uh, Says very momentarily. By the way. Well, the other problem is I didn't have this on my StarCraft screen, so nobody knew what I was talking about. But, uh, <laughs> now I have it switched, so thank God for that pause. Um, because now Oh, wait, it, never mind, it's in the myth for you, why is it doing that? What? Okay. No, it still says you're offline. Yeah, it's gonna. There's a delay in it, so it's gonna okay. take to whatever the f three or four minutes is before it starts popping online, probably. Oh, uh, okay. At least that's yeah. I think that's what happens when you use the the owned owned dot TV delay instead of the delay inside of um, XSplit itself. But. Uh, I yeah, enough of the technical stuff. I've got Riker yeah. here so that he can talk strategy type shit to everybody. So, right. um, after we, well, they're almost start. Nope, never mind. They're not started. But uh, we have uh, looking at this, uh, you know, double guard over Destro build in the center uh, that we've got for for Seventh Fleet right now. Carrier levy on the outside. This is, you know, not not a very uncommon thing. You kind of see this often. Uh, what what's usually the end state as far as overcoming another team when you do this? Well, it depends on what you're going against. Um, you got double kite BC on Nephilim with a Vice Mine card Overlord, while you have one kite ship on Seven Fleet and then Destro and Arbiter. So, um, any of the Overlord for the uh, Destro will do some damage on Nephilim. So you're gonna probably see Nephilim eventually win the middle here. Uh, most of the Guardians get the same range. Uh, once Kraken gets up to 9, they'll be able to kite as well. You know, I I think because they have the double BC, uh, in the late game, Seventh Fleet definitely has the advantage. You agree? Uh, yeah, looks, looks like it. I mean, um, anytime, well, and this is, this is G-Star the boss. Uh, dipping into his bag of opinions about Star Battle, but I think there are a lot of people that agree. Um, anytime you see one composition that has a battle cruiser and another composition that doesn't, you would lend a late game advantage if you had to choose to whichever team did not have the battle cruiser. Um, hurts my heart to say because I'm an original battle cruiser player, but. Uh, Oh boy has not given a damn about the battle cruiser in quite a while. So that's a levy and oh double levy outsides. Um, so that does make up probably for the fact that they went double battle cruisers. Having two levies on the outside is is today's trend of late game awesomeness in Star Battle right now. So they do have to account for that, wouldn't you say? You know what, I think, I didn't see that before, but I think Seventh has a huge advantage with the Arbiter here. Because that Arbiter can get boost, cloak, and they have nothing to stop him on when he's going to be cloaking. Not, I'm not sorry, not cloak, boost and force fields. On Prometheum against whatever levy he goes against, and they are really able to do nothing to stop that. Okay, so there I mean, you go. One good, yeah, that's a really good point about the... Uh 
about the the boosting of the cloaking uh, when you when you account for the fact that the Duke can use force fields as well. Um, what are you thinking? How do you? What's the best way you combat the Arb then, if you're on the uh, Nephilim side? Well, I used to say lockdown, but then actually the other night, I don't think it's a very good counter. I don't think they have a really counter to the Arb at all. Um, obviously, it's the best counter to an Arbiter. But they don't have a Raven. Uh, siphon, you're not going to Siphon the Arbiter at all. He's, I mean, you, got, you don't have enough range to do that. You can try to lock him down, um, but you probably not get much luck. They, they don't have a care to even launch on the Arbiter. Uh, they really... They're just a mess about that Arbiter. They have nothing to counter it. Yeah, that's, I, that's really tough. I, you probably have to, to piecemeal your your advantages if you if you see the guy, you know, trying to cloak people a lot, then at least you can drop a parasite on somebody. Yeah. Um, but here we're, yeah, we're seeing, <laughs> we're seeing suddenly get pushed back here, though. Yeah, they're going to have to go in. If I can uh, find somebody with farm score, then we're looking at about 80 farm advantage right now for the Nephilim side. Um, they look like they're going to go ahead and, and turn tail a little bit to uh, keep things, well, keep things out of this warp trick that's about to happen. Promethium coming up in the levee, um, already up to three on the bile right now. It is range nine, and... Uh, one vial for Bite Light at this point, but Bite Light's gonna oh, fight Bite him back doing, a little man. bit. <laughs> uh, that was not a very good idea by Bite Light. He could be in trouble here. He could die. So there you have it, folks. Just, I he mean, he will die. He's dead. Riker called it. He puts himself in a terrible situation for some reason. Knew that the warp was coming and just kind of didn't act like it. Now they're gonna try to get, get a the trade. Yeah. Who's your target? You want one of the guardians, yeah, I'm the guessing. Guardian, but they aren't going to get anybody. Ah, well, that's, I, I, that's pretty, that's pretty hurtful. Uh, losing your levy, I would, I would think. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I mean, they're going to put Kira against Prometheum. I don't know. I guess they put Caboose against the carrier, the guardian. You're going to see Caboose get infest. He's going to try and infest Bunny. That's all they really have. Okay, so as far as the uh, the strengths of Nephilim's build goes, we're talking about that double levy, how you know how good that double levy is. Well, uh, no longer a double levy, and uh, I mean that's very very hurtful not only to your feelings but to your chances to win. I'm trying to find the farm thing. All right, here we go. About a 200, eh, 150 advantage right now for Seventh Fleet uh, after taking down. Uh, by light, and uh, if you're on the Nephilim side of things, Riker, what what are you thinking as a as a leader? Like, what is your your plan to overcome this huge deficit? Knowing you've got two battle cruisers, uh, they're going to be garbage in about 30 minutes. What are you going to do? I'm looking right now. I first be really mad at Bite saying, "What are you doing?" Blah blah blah. But I'm looking what they got. They have nothing stop They have no stasis or vortex, so they can't really do like anything with a nuke. Um, <laughs> you know what? I mean, if, as long as no one is simply derps, and once they get those boosts out in the arbiter, good for the levy against levy. I mean, it's just gonna just contain the rest of the game. I mean, I guess they can go missiles, but then they get force fields or dark. I mean. I guess side blast and the overlord we can get side blast and maybe snipe somebody, but other than that it's not looking good. Well like I said, Caboose can do the infest. He is really gonna infest. Um but other than that, I don't see much. He did get scourge. Okay, so we're looking at the BCs right now, plusing up those missiles on the Nephilim side. Uh looks like Seven Fleet has decided to go corrosive um with hatred, um, getting a little bit of range. And uh, the Arbiter right now is working just with his Storm, uh, still plussed up his energy a little bit. And uh, Bunny and the Destro went and grabbed his bots, wasn't able to get his improved hull yet. Uh, Duality fighting the fighting the 11 Tentacle Levy has uh, went up to 8 on the Interceptors on the outside. Uh, looks to be having a pretty good go of it. Kira's down in yellow constantly. And uh, Prometheum for 7th Fleet. 
four on the bile swarm right now uh, so still rocking about the same thing that that came in on the bite light kill and uh, Caboose is gonna try to even the odds of pushing by uh, spamming some some uh, scourge out here so uh, that looks to be I mean that's probably gonna be major uh, considering that they can't really deny him uh, that's that scourge having a consistent um, effective scourge despite the fact that the arbiter is going to storm a lot it's probably going to help their their efforts to keep the the pushes at least happening somewhat would you agree with that yeah a little bit that was a nice opportunity that one took it was a bit of a risk they didn't have a scan or anything to farm up they couldn't get a warp trick but they decided to stay at the towers try to catch them a little bit on farm before they got pushed back um so they capitalized on the opportunity there uh, the scourge, though, like you said, you have the storm, the single scourge. I mean, there's the boost now on Prometheum. Um, this isn't good for nothing at all. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's looking it's looking ugly uh, at this at this point. I guess they're uh, they're hoping for somebody on the Seven Fleet side to maybe step out of pocket. Um, if those guys don't turn out to uh, do any dirt, it looks like it looks like they're playing really really safe right now yeah. already backing out let's see what Nephilim's coming out with I, I think it's a good call you know I mean normally you want to keep up your foot on the pedal because okay, sometimes in five or six but when you haven't completely out comped like simply does right now you just take your time wait for the kill to come alright so there you go um, Caboose up to 300 on his health wildfires busting out lockdowns and he's up to his 10 range Dirty's up to his 10 range and his 8 on his longboats, but it's not going to do a lot when uh, when you got cracking, dropping dark swarms down there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's tough. They're getting countered. They're getting countered pretty tough. And uh, I mean, the dark swarm would actually still be really, really great and effective had the had the other levy for Nephilim survived anyway. Uh, but at at this point, it's yeah, it's it's hurt box. You can see them all sticking in that dark swarm right there. Kira's uh, moved to the middle. He doesn't have any kind of bile swarm right now, so can't really do much damage there. Um, he has picked up frenzy though, so. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, kind of. I guess it's kind of uh, earlier than you would normally see. Would you say? Uh, you know what? Before rapid he frenzy. I don't know about that. Well, he's. I mean, he can't. He can't dive in there about the rapid, really. He can only dive so much. He's diving in right now, but he's going to have to back out because he can't rapid reach in. Yeah, so there you go. Um, now, like Ryder's saying, I mean, he doesn't have rapid regen yet, so how much work is he going to be able to really do with that frenzy? I mean, he, he's at 11 tentacles at 14 minutes. Um, not anything that's blowing out of the park, but, you know, he's pushed in. His, his team is just trying to find a way to get out from between the towers. Uh, so you do what yeah. you can. <laughs> At the very least, that frenzy gives you the opportunity to plus up your DPS if somebody steps out for that opportune moment, you know, and somebody derps and the, the thing's going to bring you back into the game. Now he's picked up frenzy, so he's in a better spot. All right, Prometheum is with his rapid regen. 270 energy. He's up to six on the bile swarm at range 10, eating a couple uh, scourges out here. Caboose, uh, at least keeping those scourges away from the arbiter. Maybe the arbiter just, you know, doesn't care since Prometheum's out there getting money. Uh, could be another another viable uh, reason to just let Prometheum eat a couple of those out there. Um, looks like Kira, well. He's Ooh, a two bile. GG right here. <laughs> oh yeah, Prometheum is uh, deep. I would say behind the yeah. Nephilim group right now. Yeah, Nephilim's trying to take advantage of them again. Caboose is saying to go oh, back. Go. They see him, but are they going to make it? Is the question. Let's see. I think. Oh, Wildfire does not have warp. Neither does Caboose. Caboose is at one five speed. He is in trouble. He will. I <laughs> bet money that he's dead. 
Lullard's only at 1-6, so if he comes in at too much to try to help, he's oh, going to... Oh, they, yeah, they got the force field. The wildfire will go down here. Oh, man. And then it might switch next to Caboose. Now it looks like, uh, yeah, Caboose turns around to drop a Scourge on somebody. That does help. Oh, Everybody runs don't... away. They don't stay on him. Just... Get in there. Nice. He's, he's dropping another Scourge, man. Forget it. Yeah, jeez. That's an aggressive way of playing defense, but it might have worked for him. Yeah, He's going to go back into the base and have about 800 hit points, but it worked. And uh, now, Sevenfleet's going to have to get out of the dodge a little bit. You see Kira, Kira probably uh, better off moving into that Dark Swarm. All right. Looks oh, like <laughs> Wildfire's not very happy. Might be, might be a little bit upset. Um, Oh, they just called game. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Shout outs to the to the boy Lullard, um, pointing out a very uh, he's got a very good point. Um, <laughs> the fact that Riker is not playing does bode well for the Seven Fleet crew, um, <laughs> causing them yeah. to win this match. Uh, yeah, that's what. No, no offense, no, no offense to the, to the young man Riker though. I, you know, he's sometimes he co-casts with me, so we don't want to shit on him too much on this. I take it. I take the truth as it is. <laughs> but uh, yes, that is gonna be GG for game two of TSL week whatever this is. I think ten, maybe eleven, ten. Week it's near ten. the end. Is it ten? Week ten TSL, uh, seventh fleet, and Nephilim now tied. At one game apiece, game three should be quite exciting for you. Don't know who's going to catch yeah, it over. for you. It's over. They cheated it out, so yeah, it's done. I, you know, there's just shenanigans happening right now. Oh, uh, game two's over. What? Oh, yeah, yeah this was won. game three. Yeah, oh, well, we see, won there two. you go, people. Don't listen to me. This was, in fact, <laughs> game three. Um, I guess Seventh Fleet took this two to one. Uh... But yeah, thanks to everybody who uh, who joined in. I think there probably are about zero to one people viewing. But on, <laughs> on behalf on behalf of Jester and Riker, um, good star battling and good luck to all of you. Bye. Bye, one person.